We've got a treat for you today. We're gonna to go visit Carrie Tombazian, who is a lovely person and a super talent. She works all the time. I aspire to be her. So I'm gonna go steal some of her secrets. Let's go. Hello! Hello! Hi, Paula. Good to Good see to you. Good to see you. Thank you for coming. And happy Valentine's oh, Day. Oh, a little thank sugar. you. That a little sugar. Thank you. That is so dear. Come on in. Come on. Come see the, the Shea Carry. I am so excited. So this is where the magic happens. This is my little editing, my little editing bay. As you know, an editing bay now is a computer, and my booth, which I have to tell you, I love my booth. Oh, it's I so do. nice. You know the thing? Do you know who Tommy Smeltzer is? Yes. Tommy Smeltzer built this booth as a thank you because we took care of his dog. I'm Carrie Tombazian, and you may know me from Tonight at Eleven. And I say that all across these United States and beyond, actually, actually internationally as well. Um, locally in Southern California, the thing I'm known best for is really my time on 94.7 The Wave. And sometimes my kids will say, oh, your mom's Carrie Tombazian. And so I, they, they grew up having me be mocked for that, but they loved it, of course. So you know me from bringing on the news. Um, I'm the voice of Reels Channel, the female voice of Reels Channel, and I'm Carrie Tombazian. Hey, John, here we go with take one of three of VO1. Who is the most influential person in your life? So that's another one. All these questions which you proposed before we met, got me really going through, you know, it really causes you to think about, well, who is? You know, God, my mother, God rest her soul, my father, God rest his soul. But really, um, I think the most influential person is the person of my family, my husband and my three children, because they are, they are the feedback. You know how when you do a gig, you're like, can I get feedback? And we don't often get it. Um, except if we're hired again, but they are the immediate instant feedback. Um, when my kids were young, really young, the instant feedback was, oh, this is not working. I'm trying really hard to get this and it's not working. Um, or, oh wow, this is working. And I think that, you know, the longer you're in a family unit, the, the, more you're able to start observing yourself as opposed to just, oh, my husband, blah, 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 or, oh, my daughter, my, you know, Grace is this or that. It's like, oh, how am I in that? What's my, what's my contribution? What's my, what does that say? So, Carrie. Yes. What is the most defining moment of your life? You know, that question is like a trick question because you want to say, well, uh, the most defining moment was when I, about my husband, or when I had my first child, or when I got my first radio job. But I think I can't help going back to 1988. And it was in one month, my then friend, who I had only known for four months, proposed marriage. In that same week, I was offered a job on 94.7 The Wave, where I was for over 25 years. And I also went back to church that year, in that same week. I kind of call it my year of grace. I think it was the year that after, I had a really tumultuous uh, childhood. I had a great early childhood, but there was addiction in my family. My oldest sister was a heroin addict. And so it was a very hard uh, adolescence and all through my 20s, there was a lot of struggle and battle. So that was the year that I felt like, oh, the struggle's over. <laughs> the movie quality reenactments punch up the drama. If you could give one piece of advice to a large group of people, what would it be? I would tell them to husband their personal resources. How do you decide where to put your investment? Who, who is worthy of your, your juice? Who's worthy of your equity? You know, that is a lifelong learning process because I think in our 20s, Oh, we just barf out everything to everyone. We want to tell everyone our story. We want to show everyone what we've got. We want to blah, 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 right? And then we learn like, oh, 
I just got burned. That was not so good. Um, and I think that's, you know, a process. Then in your 20s and 30s, you start to pay attention. I mean, that's really the deal is pay attention. But I think it's it's important for people to understand it's not just being aware of what's going on in the world and what's going on. It's looking inside because we as as a people, as a species, we have the fight or flight uh, instinct. If something is scary, we're either going to take up arms, the wildebeest is charging, or we're going to get the hell out. And personal truth is scary. What is true about me scares the crap out of me. So, so I think we have to pay attention along the way and learn, you know what, I was attracted to that kind of person and that didn't work out so well. What was that? Oh, what was in me? You know, it's, it's so it's, 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 it's longer than be woke. Mm -hmm. Pay attention and then reflect back. What does it say about that person? And what the hell does it say about me? And that's how you start to get enough information so that you can make wiser investments. The movie quality reenactments punch up the drama. Because I grew up in a house where there was tumult and, you know, who doesn't, you, you often are looking around, that one has a better career, that one has a better family, that one has a better marriage, that, one ha that, that one's kids went to friggin' Yale. I'm like, Yale? I, you know, I, I just feel like everybody in life no one gets out unscathed, no one. We all get a portion, no matter what it seems like on the outside, everyone gets a portion. So I feel like if we can focus on collecting the good and then spending it wisely, I just think that's the best path forward in community. And I do think that as we, as we grow in community, we affect the world at large. I used to say this on the radio, on Valentine's Day. <laughs> keep the door of your heart open for love, but put up a screen door to keep out the vermin. <laughs> you know, you gotta stay open, but if you have no screen door, you don't wanna let everything in. I love it. <laughs> and it is That's Valentine's right. Day. It's Valentine's Day. I used to say that every year. And so then it just came right around. That's so funny. Yeah. That is so great. The movie quality reenactments punch up the drama. What I think would be the most surprising thing for people uh, to know that, that they would learn about me. And not, not necessarily people in the industry because it's not quite as uncommon. But people at large, I am a high school dropout. I quit school uh, at the end of the first semester of my 11th grade, of my junior year. And, uh, and that was at a time when, in the 70s, when, you know, there, there wasn't as much, uh, there weren't as many paths through which a, a person who went off the trail could actually go and succeed. God bless my mother and father. You know, they were such brave soldiers. You know, in 19, the early 70s, there, there wasn't a Betty Ford clinic. Having a heroin addict for a daughter, my oldest sister, was, it was horrifying and terrifying. And, and then, you know, it just, there was so much going on. So I think for me, you know, part of it I would, I'll take credit for, and that is that I, I found a way to compensate um, to look for ways like where where can I excel? What what do I have? I wanted to just be an actor, you know, like that was my thing. And a very smart friend of the family said, "You're too ethnic." And at that time, I was too ethnic. Um, he said, "But you have a beautiful voice." And I, what did that mean? You have a beautiful voice. What do you do with that? So you know, this is the sort of kismet of life, or as I like to say, the conspiracy of goodness. Uh, the year, so this is the part that I don't get credit for. The year that I decided to get into radio was the year that the EEOC decided that the broadcast industry was discriminatory against women. I was a teenager, and I made a tape. I, I, took, a, I took a workshop with Tress McNeil, and Tress and I always say, that workshop 
was only for us because we're the only two people from uh, who emerged from that workshop and went on to be successful. God, I love that woman. She's terrific. Anyway, um, so I started blindly sending my demo tape around to stations all over and I didn't want to leave the LA and everybody said, you're going to have to leave LA. I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. So I, I think it was a combination of you look for opportunity. My opportunity was, oh, radio stations are looking for women now. Um, you find what your real gift is. And, and, you know, that's also a process. It can be a process of elimination. I had, you know, I am a fantastic actor. But at the time, it didn't kind of matter that I was fantastic or not. Um, now, I'm actually having fun kind of returning to it. But, um, but I, I think that you have to look for opportunity, find straight, and it's the most cliche thing in the world, but gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. When you are grateful in your work and you get tiny little, um, you get a little job here or a little job there or something good happens, you don't think, well, when I, but when I, but when I get that, when I get that, you got to really relish the, the, the small wins because I used to say to my kids, if you're not content with what I've given you, give it back. And I'm not giving you any more. And that's kind of how I feel about my relationship with God, what I you know, understand God to be, which is I got to find joy and contentment in what I'm, what I'm reaping here. And then, and then I get to look to the next thing. So now I want to show you my favorite part of this little construct of ours. In 2002, my husband said, you know, I want to build a theater. <laughs> I said, a theater? So we tore down our detached garage and we built a theater. We built the booth and a little office that Tom and I share. All that clutter is my husband's. And our little, our little lobby with, with all of our popcorn and, and such. And when we built this, I sat down when it was finished, when the construction was finished, I sat down on my back porch and I wept and I thought, what have I done? Oh my God, we spent all this money. What were we doing? This is so bougie. This is our unbelievable gift. We do screenings. We've had 50th birthday parties and 40th birthday parties and baby showers. We have had my kids. There have been so many kids who have slept on this ground we hosted a boys, a men's choir, young men's choir. They were a college group from uh, North Carolina and they were coming into town to do a concert. And my friend called me and said, can 12 college boys crash at your house? And the, half of them were in here. So this is my favorite place. And we watch movies. That's, it's incredible. That's an incredible space. What else will the price of fame reveal about Shania Twain? You'll have to watch to find out. You're listening to Night Grooves on 94.7, The Wave.